The following podcast contains adult language and themes. So don't say we didn't fucking warn you. You're listening to Sarah Talk. It's political. If you really give a fuck about the life of the unborn, you'd better be prepared to help fund WIC and food stamps and welfare because you don't get to say, I care about that life until it's born and then turn around and say, well, you shouldn't have had sex if you couldn't care for this child. You should have gotten a better education. You need to work harder. Maybe you should take a second job. It's not my responsibility. Critical. When was the last time a Christian was allowed to have a separate place to say their prayer? Look, you can literally bow your head at your fucking desk. You're like, why did he get the thing and I didn't get the thing? You didn't ask for the thing! And positively, LGBT positive. Look, and whenever there's someone coming after my community, they are either wearing a MAGA hat, carrying a Bible, or more often both. Oh, and occasionally completely absurd. What the hell is an item? Potatoes. In you could take a drill, drill you a hole a in a potato, potato and fuck and a potato. Fine. Would you marry a potato though? Would that could that be okay? No, but you wouldn't have to marry a potato because a potato doesn't need consent for you to fuck it. And now, from Haines City, Florida, your host, Sarah Austin. Hey everybody, welcome to Sarah Talk. Didn't that sound a whole lot better than it did this morning? I figured it out. <sighs> really did. So, here's the problem. What's the problem? <sighs> well, I mean, which problem? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll get to the problem in a minute. It's uh, October 4th, episode 181. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. I bought you a cheap. Thanks. <laughs> I bought you a phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh god um oh, man so earlier today we had uh an interview with seth andrews which uh was great mm -hmm. uh, other than the technical difficulties that i was having with uh the new <laughs> is the dog gonna eat your hand off she's gonna find yeah, herself <laughs> in the other room is what's gonna happen <laughs> Uh, so I, I got this new mixer and it's digital and I really like it, but, um, I don't know how to make all the things work. Yeah. So, uh, so it sounded like shit and it doesn't have the same outputs that the analog mixer did. So getting Skype to work yeah. on the thing is, I don't know how I'm going to fix that. Well, and hasn't Skype always had its no. own set of issues? Well, Skype as has as issues audio. Like, internally, but no, like I've never had problems with it because I had it set up the right way and now oh, it's okay. eh, anyway. You gotta figure it out again. Um, yeah, but I, I don't think this is capable of it. You know what I need to do? I need to get Vern on the horn. Yeah, from, uh, there you go. The ACA and have him. <sighs> Would anyone like to buy a dog? No, wait. Would anyone like a free dog? <laughs> Would anybody like to adopt a dog? John, where the hell are you? Right. <laughs> His dogs paging, would eat our dog. Paging John Willis. Oh, God. John Willis, please report. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, how about that impeachment? Holy shit. There's so much going on. It's, it's wow. She's not going to come to you. Sure she is. You think so? Okay. Sure she is. All right. She's not going to have a fucking voice. Oh, Cause, okay. Because I'm not going to sit and listen to her Jeez, bark just her little give her fucking a concussion, head off. concussion, why don't you? Well, if that shuts her up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. Oh. I love you, too. You're a little bitch, but I love you. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so it looks uh, yeah. like we might actually have something with this God, I phone so. call thing. I mean, my favorite thing about that whole story is that, that he was like, oh, there was this phone call with Ukraine, but it was a, it was a perfect call. It was, it was perfect. There was nothing, nothing wrong, nothing at all. Uh, you know, we didn't uh, ask for any dirt on, on <laughs> Joe Biden or his son. And then they released a transcript, and the transcript is like, "We asked Ukraine to give us <laughs> right. dirt on." <laughs> right. <laughs> it literally did the thing you said it you didn't right. do, but you said. See, okay, and so here's my thing for all the people who were, who were, are are referencing the Clinton, the Clinton yeah. impeachment. He didn't get impeached because he got a blowjob. He got impeached because he lied about it. So right. now right. we have what I would say very conclusive evidence that Trump lied about several the things. Well, I but mean, it, but it doesn't matter if the Senate is not going to yeah. Uh, yeah. 
to vote to remove, which they oh, won't because so stupid. the Republicans are, I don't know if they, they're, uh, we could still be surprised. Nothing in the last two or three years has been no. as expected. So it's hard telling. Speaking of the Clinton <laughs> impeachment. So uh, breaking news, <laughs> Monica Lewinsky did not tweet anything about giving Donald Trump a blowjob to get him out of office, to get him impeached, because that's all Republicans care about. Which is sad, but we got a post either way. So, so there's a fake <sighs> image of a tweet uh, from Monica Lewinsky that says, you know, like, look, I'll take one for the team. I'll, I'll give <laughs> Donald Trump a blowjob because that's the only thing Republicans seem to think is impeachable. And I knew it wasn't real, but I didn't care. It's not hard hitting news. It's fucking funny. Right. So I shared it. And even in the subtext of what you shared, it said that, real or not, this is hilarious. And so <laughs> the fact checkers over at factchecker.com or whatever it was, I don't, I don't remember which thing. But anyway, apparently Facebook is, you know, uh, their new algorithm is flagging fake, actual false news stories. It's not news. It's a fucking meme. It's a right. screenshot. <laughs> It's not news. It's funny. Let us have funny. Yeah. Right, Gizmo? Let us have funny. So anyway, I thought that was stupid. So stupid. I would, I don't know who you would even. <laughs> Hello, may I speak to Facebook, please? Right? Like... <laughs> you don't call Facebook. Like, what do you do? You do nothing because they no. own you. Yeah. So stupid. They own you. And they're listening. They can fuck themselves. Okay. <laughs> it's just annoying. It's like, hello, if you didn't think it was satire. Right. I mean, I mean her, her Twitter feed is pretty funny. I could see it, but uh, I didn't expect it to be real. Yeah, I mean, and <laughs> we don't really claim to be a news no like no outlet so why are you even looking at our stuff that we post you dumbasses i don't get it anyway i thought that was really stupid yeah it was at first i thought someone like flagged our post right. and oh, i the, was like Fuck yeah you who's i I, yeah. I yeah i i was i was thinking man someone grandpa's back on our page troubling right. us again exactly but, yeah but no it came it, through from the so stupid um, you have some heartwarming stories to share. Why don't you start with a story about this kid at school? That was the uh, oh, okay. So the library this is going to be so helper. difficult. Now, and while you're telling that story, I'm going to <laughs> okay dispose of the dog. Of course you are. <laughs> don't say it that way. <laughs> That's why I said it that I way. I love you, Gizmo. Have fun in puppy heaven. <laughs> <laughs> say goodbye, Gizmo. <laughs> goodbye, Gizmo. You are so horrible. Um, yeah, this is going to be really hard to do without naming children. Okay, so we have book fair at our kids' school, and the, our youngest is in pre-K. And so what they do with the littler kids, um, they always get the kids to come into the book fair, and they write the little wish list of all the books that they want and how much they are and where they're located in the book fair, and then they send it home. So mom and dad or mom and mom or dad and dad or grandma or whoever can send in money to purchase said books. So our daughter's class came in and I, I was working the book fair that day and she's very grumpy and independent and doesn't like people. And I don't know where she gets that she's, from. She's you. <laughs> hey, <laughs> she is. <laughs> So I knew that her seeing me would be kind of an issue. So I kind of hid in the back behind the curtain to kind of like a creeper, <laughs> a creeper at an elementary school. Yay. Um, and she walks in and we have a, um, I don't even know what the terminology is for this poor kid. Cause I didn't ask that. <laughs> anyway, we have a queer um, middle schooler. And what they do is they take the younger kids and they group them with an older class and each one, it's one-on-one -on -one, and the older kids walk the little kids through the book fair 
and they fill out their wish list for them so that it's legible for parents to read. Um, and our daughter got paired up with this queer middle school student. And um, it was so funny because at first I was like, oh, cool. But then I realized that she was just being a bitch to this poor person who's just trying to help her fill out her wish list. So I had to get involved um, and kind of pull out, pull her out of the shell a little bit. And finally, once once she was going, she filled her list out longer than our son did his. But um, I just, just a simple little thing. I just said, I want to get this right, but what is your name and your preferred pronouns? Because you can tell by looking at this kid that they're not on one or one or right. The other There's side a fluidity of the, or right. a non-binary or There's something, something happening. going on. Right. A different gender presentation yes. than the binary. And right. so, you know, I was trying to like talk to our daughter and be like, you need to have this person help you. But I, it was just, it was kind of like, okay, I need to, I need a name or I need a pronoun. <laughs> um, and the reaction I got was just like this. You could just tell that it meant so much that I took the time to even ask. And um, so it was just a sweet little moment. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else? This book. Okay. So this is the funny story. So the school is, is K to eight. So you have pre-K all the way to. Through middle school. Middle school. Right. So we have our book fair is ranges from those those reading levels. Um, and one of our middle school teachers came in when there were no students in the room. And, and there's like five or six moms that are always there, um, myself being one of them. And she just kind of pulled pulled off to the side and said, hey, I just want to let you know this book is um, that you're selling. It might. You, um, you might have some parents. You might, yeah, you might have some parents complain that, that or, complain about the book because yeah. um, because there's a trans character and a lesbian couple, and you know, so, <laughs> and so I was not. The author just pulled out <laughs> queer bingo and was like, right? check, 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 <laughs> check, bingo. <laughs> so um, I wasn't there for that initial conversation, um, but one of the moms was like, oh, oh. oh Okay, so now, so that'll just tell us the people that we don't want to be friends with. <laughs> um, so they're like, they were telling me this because one of the other moms was reading it, and it's like it's like a thirty minute read. It's a graphic novel. Yeah, it's like a comic. So it's comic a comic book. book. Yeah. Um, but so she had been reading it, and I didn't really pay attention that she was had been there reading the whole time that I was standing there. <laughs> um, and then she stopped. She finished. She's like, oh, she's just. You know, it's like um, it's like data. On Star Trek, when when a date is reading it, it's, he's just going whoop, faster, yeah, right. increase speed, increase speed, increase speed, and then this text is just scrolling by. It was like that. Flip, 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 flip. Yeah, this is fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and so, I mean, she's a bookworm, so she, she reads pretty fast. But even when I sat down to read it, it didn't take that long. Um, but she finally, she finishes up. She goes, yeah, there's nothing wrong with this at all. And I said, what, what do you mean? What's going on? And that's when they filled me in on what had happened. And I said, oh, a trans character, a lesbian couple. Um, here, will you bring this up for me? <laughs> so I bought it. Um, only knowing that. And then I brought it home and I read it. Um, and it is a very, uh, it's not my style yeah. of book, A, because I don't like comic books. But, well, um, is, is it targeted to an age range? What it that... is, it's a, it's a story about an all-girls soccer team. Okay. And this one girl on the soccer team, and she's like, I guess she's a fifth grader and she's playing with a bunch of middle schoolers and she's just trying to find her way. Um, but it kind of, it's just, just little quirky things about that time in your life when you're, you're going into middle school and you're okay. figuring things out. Um, and as far as the trans character, it was like, two mentions really it wasn't it Good. wasn't even part of the storyline it was just like oh, oh by, the, by way. the way yeah um and you know it was just it's a story about middle school kids <laughs> um so yeah. i but i was like i like i made the point to say you know what yeah i'm gonna buy it because 
if that's like these characters need to be written uh-huh. and they need to be written in a positive light, even if it is just an honorable mention. Right. Um, but the authors that take the time to incorporate that into these stories should be supported because then that opens the door to more positive yeah. um, stories to be written. Yep. And, and better to come home to better to, to be purchased yeah. into a oh. home that will appreciate it and yeah. won't like, you know, have a fucking fit mm-hmm. when their kid starts talking about, Oh, what's the trans right. person? Right. You know? And then the parents like lose mm-hmm. their fucking minds over it. Um, but anyway, it's called the breakaways bad at soccer. Okay. At friends. It's written by Kathy G Johnson. Um, it's a cute little book. If that's your thing, check yeah. it out. Or if you have a kid who might have, yeah. appreciate it. Like, I'm, like our son loves, loves the comic book stuff. So this is something that will probably, He'll probably end up reading. I don't know how into it he'll be reading about a girl's soccer team, but you never know. <laughs> uh, I'm looking at Kathy G. John. Dot net. Mm-hmm. Kathy G. Johnson. Yeah. So. Oh, she does like all kinds of artwork. And... Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. Um. What else is going on? Oh, while we're talking about the trans issues and, and we sort of talked about this with Seth and not in any sort of specific terms, um, because I didn't, I mean, that wasn't the intent of that interview. Right. Um, but we talked about, there was a question, a a topic that came up, uh, I threw my notes away, but we talked about, um, no, 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 it's not it. Oh. Outrage culture and, and cancel culture and, and that sort of thing. Um, because, well, for one, the, the question sort of came up when, um, when we found out that we were going to be talking to Seth. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't, I, I probably have an unpopular opinion on this topic. For the the community that I belong in. Yeah. So. <laughs> so I thought maybe we'd talk about that just for a little bit. Um, the idea that. The, the moment someone. Says a thing. That doesn't line up with. You know. Our. Ideals. Our stated goals and purposes Mm -hmm. and that we just cast them off into the wilderness to you're out of the village right you know go live with the wolves uh we're gonna burn down your hut fuck you Mm -hmm. don't come back i don't like that no but but there's a lot of that going on yeah and it's and it's, I'm not saying it's not warranted because I, I feel like that typically comes from people who are hurting. Yeah. Right. It's a, and it's that's a, valid. It's, um, it's a bruise reaction. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, if you've got a bruise and somebody's doing this to it, right. It hurts and you're going to, you know, like, mm-hmm. it, so I get it. Um, but at the same time, I mean, at what point? do we go okay there's got to be a solution for this there's got to be a better way to handle it in general um because we can do it with almost anything else and i and i i I just spent a week well two weeks in a small room with 10 to 15 women all raising children Mm. from all different backgrounds all different beliefs um and we all had the same common goal and we focused on that goal and even though we have differences and even differences even though like we put obviously the differences of beliefs and race and all of that aside um but even when it came down to a difference of opinion on how we needed to do a thing in that room we were able to walk through it as adults and talk Mm -hmm. through it and and come to a, a 
common ground agreement on things. Um, so we do that just as human beings every day of our lives. So there has to be a way, a way right. to formulate that into this type of stuff. Even like, I mean, and I think Seth made a great point about how a lot of it is you just, you get passionate about something and, mm -hmm. and, and sure. Especially when it's your identity. <clears throat> yeah. Like when it's, when it is core to who you right. are as a person. So yeah, I, there's, I don't, I'm not blaming anyone necessarily right. for that. Um, what my concern is, is what does that do for the long term? Um, and he brought up a good point too about, um, uh, what's the word he used? Not rehabilitating, but deescalating. No, bringing someone back into the fold. Oh, so the idea that Crap. if we cast people off and they they're never to be seen again, we put them on a boat, send them off to a remote island, you are out forever. Redemption. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, is there a place for redemption? Is it and and I get it, there's a lot of nuance. It depends on what the right. the, the severity of the infraction and uh all of that kind of stuff. Like the, that's the issue I think here is that there's just so much nuance mm -hmm. that we just don't make time for that. Yeah. Um and so I uh, we've been speaking in vagaries, but let me give you an example. And I, we talked about this, but not at any length um, on the show before. Um, I don't know what, a couple months ago, the atheist community of Austin in Texas had a fucking barn fire over there. They, um, they do the atheist experience and several other live uh, call-in video shows, uh, YouTube and podcast. And they had on as a guest um steven woodford who's uh goes by rationality rules on uh, youtube now look i i don't like youtubers i'm not into youtuber like that's not my style um and i'm talking when i when i say style i mean th these people that you know have clearly scripted every word and make hard edits that that just look weird that mm -hmm. choppy and funky and to to yeah. you know to piece it all together um i don't like that style it's just yeah. not, i'm a conversational listener i like right. i like shows that are conversational you want, you want it to feel organic yeah um and there's a way to edit around that to make it happen that's hard to do with video right that's hard to do in in the youtube space um so i didn't know who this guy was i still really don't know or care to know who this guy is um Anyway, he had put out a video that was very uh, critical of trans people in sports. And he used as his evidence and data this level of such and such in the blood and this level of this hormone and uh, muscle mass and bone density and all of this stuff. And these are arguments that we've heard. They've been trotted out over and over and over again. and. And I think maybe the 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 bottom line of this whole conversation is going to come down to like, look, I I'm speaking from a place of privilege because this stuff doesn't affect me and I don't care about it. And I and I know on some level that's probably not right either, but I don't play sports. I've never played sports. I'm not good at sports. Um, I, I think that we should be paying teachers what professional sports players yes. make. Um, and and every step prior to that is just grooming for for uh, a professional career well you know where the one percent of uh, every high school kid that plays football or whatever is going to mm -hmm. make it but um but that's what it's all about it's all about business and wins and and mm -hmm. i just uh, it's just not a culture that i've ever seen myself fitting into so I really don't care who plays sports, on what team, with what gender. It don't matter to me. I think it's dumb that we separate sports by gender anyway. If it's just a game, like we were told in 
fucking t-ball mm, when I was seven see, years it's old. Not Sarah. It was. It's just a game. You're out here to have fun, but it's not. Yeah. And that's why. That's why all of this matters to someone. Right. Because if it was just a game and we were just having a good time, yeah. everything would be co-ed and no one would fucking care. Yeah. So I had a conversation with, this is going to be a very rambling, like I haven't thought this through very well. So I'm thinking this through live on the air. Um, I, I talked to one of the, the guys that comes to the um, atheist community uh, events. And he asked me, but what do you think about all of this? And, and, you know, I said, basically what I just said, I really don't care. Uh, it's sports. It doesn't mean anything to me. Um, I say, you let people play. What does it matter? Um, but also it, 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 as far as this rationality rules guy and his arguments, if we're going to argue about this blood level and that testosterone level and this thing in the brain or whatever we're talking about unless and he was specific course specifically talking about trans women coming onto women's teams and dominating mm -hmm. well first of all that doesn't happen like we right. you you would see that all the time but that doesn't happen sidebar you're going to destroy, destroy my train track here. No, I'm okay. just I'm just going to back up your point. It doesn't happen. I'm going to tell you why it doesn't happen. Before Sarah started taking hormones, she was the one that opened all the pickle jars. <laughs> this is true. And now I have to open all the pickle jars. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's that's absolutely 100% true. Yeah. Um, Just saying. Right. Go on. So, but if we're going to measure Sorry. bone density and muscle mass and all of this stuff, what he's saying is it only matters when we're comparing and measuring a trans woman against quote unquote real women. That's what he's really saying. Because if he really meant that, if those metrics mattered, then all players would be tested and there would be a certain threshold that you would have to be within mm -hmm. in order to play the sport. Right. And if you were outside of, it'd be like boxing. Right. You'd be in different classes. Right. You have weight classes and. But you know what? We don't do that. Yeah. We don't check your bone density and, and like, think about people who play in the WNBA. Now, no one cares about the WNBA because it's a women's sport and nobody cares about women's sports in this uh, fucking stupid society. Um. But they're not measuring each other for, oh, this, this girl's too tall. That's, you know, that's an unfair advantage. <laughs> Fuck off. <clears throat> and yeah. it's just a goddamn game. <laughs> okay. So what happened <clears throat> in the wake of all of that, uh, Stephen Woodward puts out this video. He appears on several Atheist Community of Austin programs. They do not mention this video mm -hmm. this troubling video mm -hmm. um and uh, apparently records show they were well aware of it um and decided not to handle it for it was this big drama and i tried to stay out of the drama but the response was very almost uh, almost partisan like you had one camp that said Stephen Woodward's a, a transphobe, burn down his hut and send him into the woods to die. Mm -hmm. Deplatform this guy. He shouldn't be talking. He's an anti trans bigot. And on the other side, you had the people that were like, Hey, it's a free country and a, the platform is the platform and people can say whatever they want. Um, you know, the ACA has a right to have whoever they want to appear on their shows and they don't have to answer to anybody. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, hey, maybe there is something to all this stuff about testosterone levels and blood measurements. And, you know, maybe, maybe there is something to it all. Uh, and and we should at least be able to have a conversation about it and not just scream, you're a bigot, and shut it down. Mm -hmm. 
And I feel like we just had the conversation that should have been had after that, which is who cares? Right. Are you testing real women, quote unquote, right. against each other? All of that stuff. That's the nuanced conversation that should come from it. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I mean, because, okay, so this guy's entitled to his opinion and he has the right to share that opinion. And the ACA can have on whoever they want, like you just said. Um, and the fact that it can drive such a wedge between people in the community is yep. a scary thing. Yep. Because you, know, you look at <clears throat> how divided our country is, just in general. Like, this is just, we live in a very divisive time. We, we do. And... You know, I, I don't know many atheists that don't also fall under the umbrella of, of humanists. Um, I'm sure they exist. They're the ones online, you know. Yeah. Telling believers that they're stupid. and. But I just, I have to feel like more of us. I got something in my eye. This is not good. I have to feel like there are more of us that, that care about the human element of all of this mm -hmm. like there's feelings there's people people are are getting hurt right um people are being triggered on both sides on many sides oh, God. but i mean you know like i mean there there's something to be said for the religious holdovers mm -hmm. you have these things that you know you might logically be able to think through the steps but emotionally, in a moment, you're going to have that knee-jerk reaction that's been programmed into you. Yeah. And it, it's hard to weed that out. And it's, it's so, it, it's not just a simple cut and dry thing. There's so many different dimensions that right. have to be broken through. And then each person. So it's, it's just a huge clusterfuck mm -hmm. of, of like, there's no, there's no easy answer. Right. And I think one of the things that that worries me about this outrage culture, the the cancel culture, is not only that you have this, you know, it's tribal. You have Tribe A screaming, he's a bigot, shut him down, let's boycott his YouTube, whatever. Right. And if you even so much as say, hey, you know, maybe we should, my suggestion was, maybe you should get him back in a room with you guys, on the air or off, whatever, and say, hey, listen, these are the concerns that we yeah. have. Would you like to go back on the show and we can talk through it? Give him an opportunity. Now, the, the, how that played out was, he said he was going to make an uh, apology video he made a video that was not really an apology. It was a non-apology. And then he made another video that kind of made things worse. And, and so he tripped over himself mm -hmm. through the whole thing, right? But so not only do they say, throw that guy out of the village, but if you even suggest, hey, you know, maybe there's a more nuanced conversation we should have here. Maybe there's, maybe there's details that you don't know. Right. All you know is what this guy posted to his YouTube yeah. and what was said on the ACA's YouTube. You, there may have been phone calls behind the scenes. You don't, mm -hmm. you don't have all the details. And so in a lack of that information, maybe we should not jump to throw him overboard. Right. If you say that, well, then you can go too. Yeah. Fuck you then too. You're yeah. one of them. You're, you're you must be a bigot your, yeah. too. Yep. Um, I don't know. I just I think it's it, it's just getting worse. It's getting more divisive. Um, in it, in a time when we need to be coming together. Yeah. Um. It's very scary because, it, like, what, what are we gonna do? Call each other's eyes out until there's nobody left? I mean. Mm -hmm. And if we divide ourselves. On every little issue, mm -hmm. I don't want to say. Let me let me rewind that. I'm not suggesting these issues are are small in nature or unimportant. That's not what I mean. What I mean is, 
we all have many issues that we care about. Mm -hmm. And this is one of them. Yeah. Right. Trans issues are a thing that I care about. Yeah. There are many other things that I care about too. And if I start pushing people away mm -hmm. and cutting people mm -hmm. off because, well, you don't agree with me on the, the atheist thing. So fuck you. And you don't, Believe, you don't agree with me on the, the trans thing, so you can go to hell, and you don't agree with me on this, some way that you're raising your kids, or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's going to be real lonely, real quick. Yeah. And I'm not saying that you have to, like, cuddle up to the bigots. No. I'm not suggesting that at all. I'm just suggesting that you can, you can separate yourself and say, I'm not going to associate with that guy. But do we need to grab the torches and pitchforks and shitty placards and run out and, and call everyone else to, to turn on that guy too? I don't know. These are things that I never thought I would have to think about in my life. <laughs> yeah. Never in a million years. The world is crap. Let us know what you think. Tell me how wrong I am. <laughs> That's okay, too. Uh, yep. Um, we won't cast you out for thinking we're wrong. We'll just right, right. secretly judge you. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, there's you can play this into all kinds of different things that are going on in, in culture right now mm -hmm. in our society. Um, you know, another big one that comes to mind is the Me Too movement. Do you, if, if someone makes an allegation, if you don't take every word that they say is the gospel truth, um, yeah, then fuck you. And, you know, we have to take women at their word and, and yes, but also again, you're, yes, you're, right. you're still only getting one side of a story. Well, and that's, yeah. And because... you're assuming that. You can't assume that every, every, but just by saying that I'm a men's rights activist now well, and I need see, to, but I'm gonna you know say what I mean? I'm going to say it a different way. Okay, good. You cannot assume that every person, I, in here. I don't know. <laughs> you cannot assume that every person that's been accused of something is guilty just as much as you cannot assume that every person that makes an accusation is being honest. Right. Right. Like that's why we have processes of investigation that's why when things come up there's yeah fact finding missions yeah. and um right. if you're so, not if you're not the person doing the investigating and you're not directly involved and you don't know the facts it it's really not smart to make any kind of assumption as to which way it it went right. until you have all those facts right uh, here's how i would say it in the me too era you we have to take these claims seriously yes but don't jump to judgment right don't rush to yeah assume that you know all the facts yeah because we don't i mean there there have been plenty of times in history where somebody has made an allegation and it was found out to be that it, the person made it all up and they were just trying to get money out of somebody. Um, there's been times where somebody has been accused of something and they were proved, they were like, you know, it was assumed that they were innocent. And then it turned out that they were actually guilty. Like but it I'm, happens all the time. Right. So you can't, you can't jump to those conclusions without the, without the facts period. Right. But the, the trouble is in the, in the world where nuance is dead that we live in right now, yeah. the fact that you and I have just said those things, how many listeners just dropped off because they don't support women? You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. It's just this, <clears> like, <throat> if your narrative and my narrative don't just line straight up, then you're done. Fuck you, you're wrong, and you're done. Well, if you leave because of what I just said under the reason that we don't support women, nothing that I said assigned a gender to either side of the story, mm -hmm. and fuck you because we are women. There you go. <laughs> there you go. 
Um, okay, so I think we. I, I I don't know what else to say about that. Beating I just. A dead horse. I yeah. I, I don't know. I just feel some kind of way about it. Mm. What um. Let's talk about while we're talking about uh, trans stuff here too. Um, there was an article in Pink News about Hillary Clinton, and I I'm sorry, but I don't know why this woman's still relevant. Uh, she was on Colbert the other night. Um, though that she, her and Chelsea wrote a book or something and they're pushing this book. That's what it is. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's a desperate attempt to stay relevant maybe, but, um, well, it's, it's actually, it's, it's a really interesting book. It's about strong women. Um, but anyway, so pink news ran this story with the headline, Hillary Clinton compares staying with bill to being the parent of a transgender child. Yeah, okay, that's how you should react when, when you read the headline. Clinton uh, described her decision to stay married to Bill Clinton after he was unfaithful as gutsy, which is part of their book title, by the way, mm. Gutsy Women, uh, and likened the experience to parenting a transgender child. Now, once you get past the, the headline, again, there's a little nuance. Um, oh, there's a there's an audio clip. I should have played it. Bill Clinton was impeached in 98 after having an affair with White House intern Monica Lewinsky, who did not tweet about uh, being willing to <laughs> suck off Donald Trump. In the wake of the revelations, the Clinton's m marriage came under immense scrutiny, but Hillary boldly issued a public statement reaffirming her commitment to Bill. You remember that? Stand by your man. Mm -hmm. uh, appearing on Good Morning America October 1st, former Secretary of State said it was the gutsiest thing she'd ever done alongside running for president. She was later asked about this comment on The View. She said, quote, You know, for some people that I've known, the right thing was to take your kids and go, clean out your bank accounts, don't look back. For other people, you know, get into a negotiation and figure out whether you want to stay. In my case, after really hard, hard thinking about it, counseling, praying, mm -hmm. all the things that I did and that we went through, I just decided it was the right decision for me, but that doesn't mean it was an easy decision. It was a really hard decision. Sometimes when your child has an issue, I had a friend a few years ago who called up and said, I don't know who to talk to about this, but my little girl wants to be a boy. What do I do? And, you know, several of us kind of, we, we didn't know what to do. We never had a friend who'd faced that before. Several of us kind of read everything and, and talked to people and gave her advice. And it was really gutsy for her to say, okay, I'm going to respect the feelings of my child as hard as, as it is for me to understand this. So I think when the question was asked personally, everybody faces a moment of decision and you have to reach deep down inside and decide what's right for you to do. And hopefully it's reached with love and understanding. Now, the, the quote reads very differently to me than the headline. I don't understand. Like, okay. You're right. Yes, I agree with you. Okay. But I don't understand what the point of bringing that story was up was right. other than just like, um, um, what's the word? Not shock value, but. Oh, I don't know. Attention grab. Like, right. Oh, let me tell this crazy story about my friend. Right. L like, Try, she, she, it seems to me like she's trying too hard mm. to make her decision to stay sound more interesting than it actually is. <laughs> right. Because anybody who's ever been in a relationship, you face problems. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I don't know. Everybody has been in a situation where they have to make a decision to stay or go. I know I've been there. Uh-huh. So <laughs> gesture at me for it was me. <laughs> Happy anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, I, any married person is already going to be able to relate to what right. you're going through. 
the decision you made. It's not really interesting because we've all been there. Right. So is that just like, she's just trying to make it sound more, uh, I, I don't know. Like I, sometimes with her, I feel I've, I've heard her on a lot of things and it feels like that a lot. Like, yeah. Like, okay, that you're was just a, trying you're too just hard. Trying too hard. Yeah. 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 I don't know. But on the, <clears throat> on the question of the analogy, is it analogous to say that, you know, deciding whether I'm going to support my trans kid is akin to deciding I'm going to stay in my marriage. It's nowhere N near. No. Mm -mm. One is an, a choice of an action that some, one person took. Right. And the other is of no fault of their own. Right. Not a choice. Right. That's, that's very yeah. different. Yeah. I mean, now. Now. Okay. If Bill had come out and said that he was Polly. Right. That... That might be a different discussion where you could kind of maybe, because that's a different, you yeah. know what I mean? Yes. Right. Um, but I, I don't, in, in no way do I see how you could, it's, it's not even apples and oranges, it's apples and sushi. <laughs> like, you cannot even relate those two things to each other. They're, they're completely different, different playing fields arenas planets in my opinion yeah moving on uh another story over the past few and I'm sorry we weren't here last week i had to work yeah it sucked yeah um police officers in rural tennessee gave a woman busted with marijuana roach in her car a choice hmm. baptism or jail oh shit a woman suing Hamilton County government and the Hamilton County Sheriff's deputies uh, after she says one of them, during the course of her arrest, stripped to his underwear and baptized her in a lake in the northern part of the county. Deputies named in the lawsuit are Deputy Daniel Wilkie and Deputy Jacob Goforth. Goforth and baptize um Whoa. according to the news observer Shandel marie riley accused two sheriff's deputies in the hamilton county government of civil rights violations and assault in a lawsuit uh saying she was horribly violated when one of the men got partially naked and dunked her in freezing cold water all reportedly to keep her out of jail after a traffic stop Okay. According to the lawsuit, Deputy Wilkie told Riley he would not take her to jail but issue a criminal citation for the marijuana if she agreed to the baptism. The suit seeks $1 million in compensatory damages and $10 million in punitive damages, plus attorney's fees. Uh, Riley's complaint says, uh, Without any lawful justification, Wilkie conducted a search of the plaintiff's person by feeling... Through the plaintiff's clothing, her breasts, abdomen, buttocks, inner thighs, and her crotch, Wilkie then told plaintiff that God was talking to him during the vehicle search, and Wilkie felt the Lord wanted him to baptize the plaintiff. Wilkie further told the plaintiff uh, that he felt the spirit. He was feeling the vagina and the breasts, not the spirit. Okay. I would like to just point out right now that if a police officer were to say that their imaginary friend was telling them things while they were conducting a search, uh -huh. they would immediately be put on a psych leave and <laughs> evaluated. <clears throat> just going to put that out there. One might hope. But apparently in the Bible belt, you can take your belt off. <laughs> And your pants And everything off. else. <laughs> According to court documents, uh, Deputy Wilkie led Riley into waist-deep, quote, frigid water and submerged her for several moments. She was shivering uncontrollably and felt horribly violated. Uh, holy shit. No, Holy Spirit. Right. Right. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yep. I hope she gets some money, but I don't think she's going to get what she wants. Yeah. It's a lot of money. Well, you always 
Yeah, and, huh? uh, yeah, I know, but ten million dollars for uh, right. <laughs> Uh, let me find, let me see if I can find this. Uh, the FFRF wrote this, uh, there was, um, oh, there's another re rele relevant, uh, story re related to that. Hold on. Let me look it up. This is all about, you know, uh, religious privilege. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah, like, I don't know what's going to happen to this guy, but uh, throw the book at him. Throw the book at him. The Bible? Sure. <laughs> Whichever book. If you're going to throw the Bible at him, throw the big, huge one that they have on the pulpit in the Catholic Church. It's like 5,000 pounds or whatever it is. Um, Not 5,000 pounds. <laughs> have you been following this Amber Geiger case? Not really. Uh, like, I haven't either. I haven't been watching it closely. Um, but the FFRF has filed a complaint with the State Commission on Judicial Conduct regarding the actions of the judge in the murder trial. Following Geiger's sentencing to 10 years in prison, State District Judge Tammy Kemp gave her a Bible, hugged her, and prayed with the former police officer, now convicted of the murder of Botham, Botham Jean. So, uh... From the FFRF, we write to raise your awareness of Judge Kemp's actions at the close of the trial, during which she gifted a Christian Bible, instructing the convicted criminal on how to read the Bible and which passages to pay attention to, and witnessing to that convicted murder. These proselytizing actions overstepped judicial authority, were inappropriate and unconstitutional. Courtroom video shows that after the sentencing, and the victim impact statement, Judge Kemp left the courtroom, then returned holding her personal Bible. She walked over to Amber Geiger at the defense table and proceeded to preach. The foundation acknowledges this was an emotional moment following Botham's uh, younger, younger brother, I think they're missing a word, uh, Brant delivering a heartfelt victim impact statement telling Geiger, I forgive you. I know if you go to God and ask him, he will forgive you. I love you just like anyone else. I'm not going to say I hope you die like just like my brother did. I personally want the best for you. I don't even want you to go to jail because that's exactly what Botham would, have, uh, would want too. Again, I love you as a person. He then asked Judge Kemp if it was okay for him to hug Geiger. The whole thing was just weird. The judge said, uh, okay, fine, and they embraced. Uh, but the the Bible thing crossed the line. Yeah. Uh, big time. Right. So, um, and apparently, I guess she, she said, like, not only this is my Bible, but, like, th this is my Bible. I have many of them, but this is the one that I read every day. And then was like, here's what you do, honey. You started John 316 and Timothy something or other. And this is what you, this is how you read the Bible. This is, mm. you got to turn to God and yeah. Bah, ha, ha. Yeah. Oh, man. Can we get video of Brett Kavanaugh giving somebody a Bible? <laughs> or Not that it would do any good. Any of the other conservative judges on the <laughs> mm. could we get rid of them that way mm, no no why not probably not i'm sure you could um yeah have the right to team working on it plano based first liberty institute a voice for religious freedom aka christian privilege is countering the complaint <coughs> filed by the FFRF. Hiram Sasser, general counsel, released this statement. FFRF is protesting Judge Kemp rather than joining the rest of the nation, celebrating the compassion and mercy Judge Kemp demonstrated. We should all be thankful the law allows Judge Kemp's actions, and we stand with her and will gladly lead the charge in defending her noble and legal actions. 
So it's okay for judges to like proselytize now? I don't think so. Mm -mm. In other news, I almost don't even want to read this story. Ugh, not one I know it's one of those. I shared it on on the the thing, and um, I I will try to tone it down as I read. Um, but uh, the following story contains content that may be. Uh, a good reason for you to skip ahead about three minutes. All right, I'll see you in three minutes. A Tucson man is facing uh, federal murder charges after investigators say he poured hot water down a six-year-old's throat, claiming the boy was possessed by a demon. Pablo Martinez, 31, charged with killing the boy with malice, a forethought, and premeditation. I will not read the details of the police showed up at the house and this is what they saw and this is what they found. Um, later questioning by the FBI, Pablo said he had noticed the boy had, quote, a demon inside of him within the last week. Um, said he saw something evil inside the boy and knew he had to cast the demon out. I can't, I can't even read the rest of this. I'm, <laughs> the stuff that I'm scrolling past. Holy shit. Um, the boy had burns over 15% of his body. I know I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Every time a story like this comes up, all I hear is the voices of those people that are like, you atheists, why can't you just leave believers alone? Their God thing isn't harming anyone. Why wouldn't you just shut up and let them have their beliefs? Why do you have to be so? This is why. Mm -hmm. This is why. Because crazy fucking ideas of demons in the minds of someone who, who is stable might be okay. Right. But in the minds of someone who is not stable, <clears throat> deadly. terrible shit happens. Terrible shit. This is the problem. Religion poisons everything. This is why this is why I'm not just an atheist. This is why I'm an anti-theist. The sooner religion goes away, the better off humanity will be. The next story is a local Orlando story. Have you heard, um, there is a local radio show called The Three Wise Guys. Have you heard of this? No. No? I, I don't know. I hit it when I'm scrolling through the, the station sometimes. Um, it is a uh, Friends Talking Faith with The Three Wise Guys is the name of the show. Mm. Um, and it's a, a rabbi and a mom and a preacher or pastor or something. Mm. Um, it's like the punchline. It's like the setup of a joke, right? Right. Um, Reverend Brian Fullwider, co-host of the radio show, has been arrested and charged with 30 counts of sexual battery of a minor. He was taken into custody in Altamont Springs on Wednesday. According to booking information from the Seminole County Sheriff's Office, he was charged with sexual battery on a minor under 18 by a person in position of authority. An arrest affidavit states the incidents allegedly recurred between March 31st, 2005 and 2010. 
Fulwider, an ordained minister, has served as a local church pastor for more than 30 years in both the United Methodist Church and the United Church of Christ. He also served at the historic First Congregation Church of Winter Park for 13 years. Fulwider, Full, Full, he's got a weird last name. Fulwider is a chairperson of the Interfaith Council of Central Florida. There is some intersectionality in that group. We know some people who are in are a part of that. Yep. Who mm -hmm. uh, this was a shock to many. 2012, he and two of his friends founded a weekly radio show called Friends Talking Faith with three wise guys. Uh, oh, it's on the NPR affiliate. That's right. That's why I, I know what it is. Um, so here again, um, he, here you have a not just a, uh, and it doesn't talk about the, it doesn't talk about the, the circumstances of was this somebody, I mean, it was a position of authority. So a I'm assuming that means it was somebody in the con in a congregation that he uh, shepherded. Um, yeah, this is these are the problem, and we we've gone a long time before we've done these since we've done these stories. It's been a while. I've I've given you a break, but again, when you create an environment where people are told. This is a man of God. Mm -hmm. This man gets revelation from the Lord. <clears throat> and then uses that position of authority to do harm. And yes, we see that everywhere. Leaders in all sorts of organizations and government in whatever. Um, that, that abuse of authority and abuse of power. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the lawmakers who are busted for some impropriety are not necessarily the ones saying, I have a direct connection with the Lord right. and I'm morally superior and I'm, you know, I have the, I have God's yeah. blessing and all of this garbage. So it's a little bit different. messed up yep um i want to end on a positive note let's um let's do our patron thanks and then we'll end on a little positive note and then we'll go to bed because we have to clean up in the oh, morning yeah. so let's thank our top patrons they are doggy daddy <laughs> You didn't come I up didn't. with something, did you? <laughs> I didn't think you would. Um, oh, how about this one? My dad's in the hospital and my brother didn't call me until three hours after. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, anyway, no. Uh, declined patron Russell. Sorry, I didn't come up with a creative name this week. I've been busy. He's probably okay with that. Titanium Snowflake. <laughs> this sounds like fun. Oh, wait, you're missing one. Hold on. Uh -oh. the, the fourth one was... Um... Oh, you fired. No, you I, fired. I, I remember what it was. Mm. Okay. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm not making it up. You are making that up. Keith, I don't believe no, you. No, I swear to God, I'm not making it up. Keith made it up. Maria Holden. There it is, right there. Wow. Well... You need to take a screenshot of that <laughs> next time she razzes us in the thing and go, well, then why are you our patron? No, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> it's terrible. Oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> She's a troll. Yes. Uh, I suppose we have to tell that story now. Yeah. Um, so on the on any of the local news media, uh, the Ledger, yeah, our um, local... Fox 35, yeah. like any of the local news, uh, Florida Phoenix, she's on. Um she and I first got into it over some anti-vax thing that she posted. And, um, she's one of these chicks who thinks that she can just post a meme and because yeah. it has facts written on it, it must be true. Right. Right. She's well, probably, she's, she probably thinks that that Monica meme was true. Probably. Well, I, I mean, uh, one of them was like, 
the truth about gmos.com or something like that truth about vaccines.com one of those things like she is uh she has bought into all the fucking conspiracies and then if you go on there and and try to present it in in a respectful way and say actually the evidence says this she just goes half cocked loony on you mm -hmm. and uh and it gets pretty interesting really fast but uh uh keith enjoys engaging with her so way to go keith good choice Funny. um all right so let's uh let's end on a little game this was um this was posted on mcsweeney's you ever heard of that celebrating 21 years of publishing daily humor for almost every day okay sounds familiar but well um... this is this is from 20 this is from a july 2016 post oh. but um but I thought it was pretty funny. I was making the rounds on the mm. social media again. Who said it? Donald Trump or Regina George? Oh, God. <laughs> All right. Okay. Here, let me, um, let me write down the numbers. I didn't prepare for this very well. Okay, number one. I promise not to talk about your massive plastic surgeries that didn't work. Regina George. <laughs> Number two. Why are you so obsessed with me? <laughs> that could have been either one of them. <clears throat> um, gonna... That's why this game is fun. Oh, fuck. Now I've got to really think. See, you know how long it's been since I've watched that movie? <laughs> fuck. Oh, somebody in the chat, help me out. No, 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 you have to guess. <laughs> I'm going to say... They're going to be... They're on a four-minute delay. You won't get the right answer shit. at the right time anyway. Um, That's Regina George. Number three. It's almost like... Does he watch television? Donald Trump. Number four. He, he put on glasses so people will think he's smart. Donald and it Trump. just doesn't oh. work. Oh, God. You know people can see through the glasses. Oh god, no! That's too intelligent to be Donald Trump. That's got to be <laughs> Regina George. <laughs> Number five. I'm gonna fail this game so bad. I like invented her. You know what I mean? That was Donald Trump. <laughs> Number six. My IQ is one of the highest, and you all know it. Please don't feel so stupid or insecure. It's not your fault. Stop it. Say that again. My IQ is one of the highest, and you all know it. Please don't feel so stupid or insecure. It's not your fault. Oh, my God. Regina. Number seven. The beauty of me is that I'm very rich. Donald. <laughs> Number eight. My fingers are long and beautiful, as it has been well documented. Are various <laughs> other parts of my body. That's an easy one. <laughs> Gross. Uh, it has to be Donald. <laughs> yeah. I have to say the answer. I'm sorry. Okay, here's the gimme. Get in, loser. <sighs> it's Regina. And number 10, her ass is too fat. <laughs> Both. <laughs> you have to pick one. Oh my god! I know that I lost this game. I'm gonna go with Donald. No, I mean Regina. I don't know Donald. <laughs> <laughs> Donald. It's Donald because it's. I think. I think I know who it's about. Go on. All right. How many did I like totally bomb on? <laughs> Hold on. <clears throat> All right, now let's go back through them. I promise not to talk about your massive plastic surgeries that didn't work. You said, Regina George, it was Donald Trump. Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> Number two, why are you so obsessed with me? You said, Regina George. That was Regina George. Number three, it's almost like, does he watch television? You said, Donald Trump. That was Donald Trump. Number four, he put on he, he put on glasses so people will think he's smart, and it just doesn't work. You know, people can see through the glasses. 
You said Regina George. That was Donald Trump. Yeah. Number five, I like invented her. You know what I mean? You said Donald Trump. That was Donald Trump. No, sorry. That was Regina George. <sighs> you got that one wrong. He said that about somebody, though. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Number six, my IQ is one of the highest, and you all know it. Please don't feel so stupid or insecure. It's not your fault. You said Regina George. That was Donald Trump. Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 number seven the beauty of me is that i'm very rich you said trump that was trump number eight my fingers are long and beautiful that's trump uh number nine you said regina george that is correct and number 10 her ass is too fat you said trump that is trump you only got what four wrong <sighs> no you got three wrong really yeah i marked one of them wrong that i shouldn't have okay uh, it was number two. Why are you so obsessed with me? You said Regina George. You're right. Yeah. So you only got three wrong. Well, That's I, not bad. Okay. Then, I, then, then, all right. <laughs> I was worried because it's been so long since I've watched that movie. And I also tend to tune Donald out when he's talking. So. <laughs> yeah. We should, um. We should go find all of those clips. Yeah. Oh, that would have been cool. A cool way to play it. To like, play it back. To play it back yeah. as, okay, let's, cool. let's see who let's actually listen to said the clip. it. <laughs> um, before we go, let's, uh, let's go back to some of the comments that I can't see, that I know you can see. I know there was something. Um, there were some things that I thought were worth mentioning. Dan wanted to know if Trump was at the book fair, because um, we all know he reads and writes around a fifth grade level. <laughs> I didn't see him. It doesn't mean anything, because um, he was in the area this week, this past week. Oh, that's right. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, talking about sports ball, there are more than one million high school football players. 6.5% of those players make the NCAA programs, and 1.6% of the NCAA pool reaches the NFL. So there you go. So it was even less than 1% of yeah. the high school kids, yeah. Um, thank you to Dan, our official Saratoc researcher. researcher. <laughs> um, CJ says, I agree with you 100% on cancel culture. I think people my age don't understand the importance of civil discourse. Instead of having conversations with people, they're glued to headlines on a TV or a computer screen without fact-checking everything for themselves, you know? I had an issue back in 2016 when I was politically informing myself for the first time in my lifetime, and I got bashed for simply wanting to be informed. It's insane. Yeah, absolutely. There's, I mean, there's a psychology thing going on there, too, of like, uh, even as adults, we sort of operate with the under with the assumption that everyone else, that the, the narrative, the story, the information that's going on in everyone else's head is the same one that I have in my head. Right. We assume that we all know the same facts and the same information and have done the same yeah. research and have talked to the same people and have like, we just sort of assume that and we shouldn't do that. Yeah, because we definitely don't. Um, Dan says that just in case you didn't know this, and if you didn't know this, I'm sorry. Maybe we should have framed this better. Regina George is the main antagonist of the movie and musical Mean Girls, and leader of the Plastics. So if you haven't seen the movie Mean Girls, maybe you should go do that. If you haven't seen the Mean Girls, you can't sit with us. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and we've cast you off into the uh, mm -hmm. wilderness, never yeah. to be seen again. Uh, also, screw you. <laughs> yes. Russell says, huh. Sarah reading off the results made me feel like I was watching Dr. Phil or that <laughs> other guy with the lie detector result. <laughs> uh, <sighs> in the case of... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I wish somebody would get the lie detector results and say, you're not the president. Yeah, right. 
Oh my god. All right. Well, hey, let's wrap this thing up. We got to get to bed. Uh, we have a yeah, we do. We have a cleanup in the morning that we've got to get to. So, uh, hey, thanks for tuning in, and we'll try to be you know more regular like we mean to be. Um, so maybe we'll see you next week. We love you. Bye. Bye. Sarah Talk is made possible by listener support. Visit patreon.com slash Talk to become a patron and help keep this program going. Contact Sarah and company by email at producer at saratalk.com or call 224-40-SARAH. That's 224-407-2724. And follow us on social media, facebook.com slash Radio, and on Twitter at Radio. Sarah Talk is a production of Sarah Austin Media.